just wanted to share a really simple uh, hip mobility routine with some progressions. Especially for a lot of us, we've been sitting in chairs so much over the last four or five months. Um, and then uh, obviously with going back to work and driving in cars, we're then again doing much more of it. Our hip joint is a ball and socket joint. Uh, it's not a hinge joint. Um, so if we keep practicing sitting in chairs like this, we're teaching our hip joint that it is a hinge, not a ball and socket joint. So therefore we're getting really tight quadriceps, hamstrings, psoas muscles, um, and also hip flexors. So what we need to do obviously is move our hips naturally. Um, you know, they love being open naturally. Um, they love to move. And if we are not moving them, we're going to feel that we're getting stuck in areas such as our low back, really, really tight hips, and of course, tight quads uh, and hamstrings. Um, so let's start moving them um, and repeat it and do it daily. So this is a routine that you can do when you're at home or break up your work routine, spend three minutes on the ground out of your chair and get really familiar with these movements. So we're starting in a 90-90 position where I've got the left foot in front of my right quad. And you just adjust this as need be for you. So what we're working with is an internal and external rotation. We start with the hands on the ground. We keep the feet hip distance apart as they slide to the other side, right? And then we do the same thing coming back. So I'm leaning back into my hands to support the first part of the movement. Keep the feet apart here. If the feet come together, it makes it harder to move the hips side to side. So if this feels uncomfortable for you, great. That's a beautiful indication to do it more, right? And this might be where you stay for a week or two, just getting your hips used to that space. In time, we're going to start to take the hands off and we're looking for a sense of smoothness within the joint and just gently engaging through the core to find a sense of flow or fluidity with the joints here. If that's feeling good for you, we can then start to put the hand on the ground and open up into the groin. So I'm just slightly squeezing my glutes, lengthening down the quad and opening into the groins, taking a seat back down, transfer to the other side, hand comes down, and then again, open into the groins. Now, that might be enough for you, but if you would like to go more, you sweep the opposite hand up and you can come into a back bend or keep the chest upright and then come back down. So just starting to slowly add on. And again, you just take this practice where it suits you. Start simple, get a feel for what's going on. And then in time, feel free to add on these progressions. So I'm going to keep going through the progressions. So we're going to slowly, from here, come up and we're going to place the hand down to start. Bring that back foot around and plant the sole of the feet down and lean into a bit of a lunge. Placing that right hand back down, sweep the left leg out to the side, come back to a 90-90 position and change sides. So my left knee is out to the side, left, knee comes, left hand comes down. Lean into left hand, sweep right foot out to the side, open the hip and come into a little bit of a kneeling lunge position, pushing through the heel. Left hand comes down, sweep the right foot out to the side, come back 90-90. So if you don't want to use your hands, woo, again, you can see what happens there. You've really got to pay attention and focus to where your body is in space. So a really nice one to start to open up through those hip flexors, using some strength also into the glutes with this one as well. And taking your time, we are in a world where everything is so rushed. So really notice what you can feel out of this one. So again, a progression from here will be now to stand up. So whether or not you use your hands or not, that's completely up to you. Slowly to step the right foot forward, I push through my heel and come up to stand. I'm going to step that back foot back. You need to use your hand to come down and do so. Sweep that right leg out to the right, back to 90-90 and change sides. Right hand goes down maybe to help. Foot out to the side, step the foot through, lean forward, stand up. Coming slowly back down, knee drops down, hand goes down if you need and transfer. So I'll do that two more times in this space. 
We're going to add on one more progression for today. So much harder coming down without using your hands. You really have to think about the movement, which is a really, really great opportunity just to be present with yourself to really think about how your body is moving in space. If you would like to add on one more progression. So we swivel, stand, and then hip pinch, which can also go to a handstand. Again, they're just progressions. Up, heel, and then hip pinch. So with the hip pinch, I have a nice flat back, soft, steady knee, and the back leg goes out to the side. And We'll do that two more times. Again, getting now some length into the hamstrings. Playing with balance. Looking for smoothness and fluidity. And of course, for anyone who has a handstand practice in, um, or a handstand in their practice, you can of course take this to here, step forward, lean forward and do a little kick up. Coming back down, transition. Taking your time, we'll go two more. It's never about what you can't do, you just do what you can. Work on keeping it smooth. See how much you can slow it down. Beautiful. So it's a little routine that you guys can do. Maybe that took about five or six minutes. But my heart rate's up a fair bit with that one and my hips feel really lovely after it. So let me know how you go. It's something that you can do without adding in any extra time. So if you're on the ground or in your couch at night, get on the floor. Do this with your kids, do it with your partner and repeat it. Become familiar with this movement and see how you feel.